As you roll up the drive, you sense its fine heritage of the past and its general feelings of aristocratic kindliness and tranquility. And welcome back to another video. This is one I've been looking forward to for a long time. Today, we're going to discuss Graceland before Elvis. Let's jump in. That quote from the beginning is the perfect description that was published in Memphis's Commercial Appeal in October of 1940. To really understand the property that is almost sacred to us now, we have to go back even farther. Initially, the land that Graceland sits on now belonged to Native Americans. By 1894, it belonged to Grace Bates Toof. So she lived in a house somewhere else on the property after she bought 320 acres. In her mid-30s, she left her husband after a nationwide, very public embezzling scandal. I created a whole video about what he did, so if you'd like to see that, I'll add a link to it in the description box below. Grace was actually a very interesting woman. She was well-traveled and was known for a massive vegetable garden that she had. Grace passed away in her home in 1928 at 68 years old. Grace's then 520-acre farm was divided amongst three family members, with her niece, Ruth Brown Moore, inheriting the portion where Graceland sits today. This part will be kind of confusing because in this story, there are three Ruths involved, but I will refer to them by their full names. Ruth Brown Moore was a volunteer who enjoyed club work and became the president of the Tennessee Association of Garden Clubs. Dr. Thomas Moore, her husband, TD for short, was actually considered a genius and graduated college at just 17 years old. He was originally from Kentucky and then became a prominent surgeon and the head of a urology department in a Memphis hospital. In the late 1930s, TD and Ruth Moore hired a local firm, Furbringer and Ehrman, to build a home on a hill in the country and name it after Ruth's beloved aunt, Grace. Just a couple years prior, Furbringer designed the Memphis Open Air Theater, known to us as the Levitt Shell, but to Elvis as the Overton Park Shell. The second half of the company, Ehrman, would go on to design the Mid-South Coliseum, another Elvis venue. So music was already in the bones of this home. The cost of building Graceland? $41,462,000. That is equivalent to a smidge over $808,000 today. Ruth Brown Moore and TD's daughter, Ruth Marie, was a young musician herself. Her mother says it best, our entire home is centered around music. We planned it for our daughter, Ruth Marie, who has played the harp and piano since she was four. The rooms have been designed with an eye to future musicals, and space was essential not only for seating purposes, but for tone and volume. In October 1940, the Moore family was interviewed about their new home for Memphis's commercial appeal in an article titled, Air of Subtle Elegance Pervades Moore Manor. Ruth Marie was 14 years old, and like her mom explained, the front of the house was designed for her musical performances. The front four rooms of Graceland, the dining room, foyer, living room, and music room, which the family called a solarium, could allegedly seat 500 guests, but I'm not sure if I believe that. Let's hear how this article describes Graceland, starting with the exterior. The porch has coach lamps in gold bronze flanking the hospitable door and a much larger porch lamp lights the porch. Side note, Elvis replaced these lamps almost immediately. I guess he didn't like coach lamps. But if you saw my secret Graceland video all about the lamps that are hanging inside the smokehouse, this is them. The dining room has oyster white paneled walls, a Chinese blue oriental rug, fine damask drapes on the windows, and decorated with Victorian furnishings. In the living room, or what they call the drawing room, it says, grouped together before the fire are two chairs covered in rose and gold tufted brocade. I thought this was interesting because it sounds so similar to what Elvis had in this space during the red era of Graceland in the mid seventies. In the living room, there was a concert grand piano, rose damask draperies, and walls of glass blocks separating the drawing room from the solarium. The basement contained a den, a library, and two game rooms. Upstairs contained four bedrooms and four bathrooms. The author finished the article by calling Graceland one of the most outstanding homes in Memphis. But believe it or not, the Moores thought of Graceland as just a comfortable country home. Ruth Brown Moore's parents 
Ruth Tooth Brown and Battle Brown lived with them. So let's talk about them for a bit. Ruth Tooth Brown was educated and a member of the 19th Century Club of Memphis, which was a women's activist club. Battle Manassas Brown was actually a former gymnast and an owner of the cotton company Battle and Brown & Co. and also the director of SC Tooth & Company, his father-in-law's business. Battle was a bit of a musician himself, singing a little bit and playing the harmonica. They lived with the Moors until Battle's death in 1955. He actually died at Baptist Hospital, and since he was such a prominent businessman in the community, he had a lengthy obituary in the paper. In it, it lists his address as Graceland. Ruth Murray had a wonderful childhood at Graceland. Here she is in the center of this photo, which was taken in 1950. There's a huge family gathering in the dining room, and though it looks quite different, there are still some of the telltale features that we recognize from Elvis's home. Ruth's bedroom was upstairs in what later became Elvis's office, and she enjoyed the outdoors with her dad. He taught her to shoot, and she once downed three geese with a single shot. He also taught her how to fish in the 25-acre man-made lake behind the house. It's kind of hard to picture it, but there was a huge lake behind Graceland in what is now the housing development that's right behind. Ruth describes Graceland as being centered around four things, music, family, cattle, and social gatherings. Okay, we're gonna take a quick break, but when we come back, we're going to talk all about the bulls at Graceland. Stay tuned. Welcome back. So in the 1950s, TD became extremely interested in cattle farming, and his business became known as Graceland Farm, specializing in the hornless pole Hereford. During the height of Graceland Farm, there could be 150 bulls on their land. He produced such high quality cattle that he was named president of the Mid-South Cattle Breeders Association in 1940. His business took off. According to the book From DeSoto to Elvis, A Brief History of Graceland Farm by author Chris McSannick, during exhibitions, TD sold prize bulls at several thousand dollars a piece, which is equivalent to tens of thousands of dollars today. TD's favorite bull was named Rolo Domino II, and he was the king of the barn long before Elvis's rising son. Rolo was so spoiled that he is the reason that the barn had AC before Graceland ever did. That's Rolo in this photo that was taken around 1948. TD actually had this photo framed and hanging proudly in Graceland for many years. When Ruth Marie was 22 in 1948, she married her husband Charles Cobb. The young couple actually lived at Graceland with her parents while Ruth toured the country as part of a professional harp ensemble. She would later become harpist for the Memphis Symphony Orchestra from 1953 to 73. Here she is performing inside Graceland in 1949. The quality isn't amazing, but we can see exactly where she's at. Ruth is in the living room just in front of the music room. Behind her is the left panel of glass blocks which decades later would become the signature stained glass peacocks. Eventually, the Moors were ready to retire and they actually divorced, so they sold the business and the rest of the cattle. They gave their only child, Ruth Marie Cobb now, one fourth of the farm, which was about 18 acres. In 2009, Ruth Marie and Charles Cobb were interviewed by Michael Lawler of the Commercial Appeal in an article titled Graceland Before Elvis. She was 82 and Charles was 86. After a while, Ruth Moore was feeling the strain of maintaining a house the size of Graceland and offered it to Ruth Marie and Charles. Charles remembered, we just didn't have the time to take care of a big house. It cost $1,000 a month to keep it up. The yard alone was like trying to take care of a golf course. We had a yard man who worked three days a week. When the property was put up for sale, Ruth said there was three potential buyers, Sears Roebuck, a private party who wanted to turn it into an exclusive restaurant, and Elvis. Sears and the restaurant buyer didn't want to split the five acres off for the church, but Elvis was happy to have a church next door. Ruth Cobb donated a bit to the Christian church next door before selling the remaining 13 or so acres to Elvis in 1957 for around $102,000. But that wasn't it. As part of the payment in the sale, the Presley's previous home on Audubon Drive in Memphis was then transferred to Ruth at a value of $55,000. She then rented it to some relatives. Charles actually met Elvis during the closing of the sale of Graceland, but Ruth never even met him. 
The following year, in 1958, Ruth Marie inherited even more land upon her father's passing, so she sold 160 acres to a developer which ended up becoming a subdivision. Decades later, after Graceland Christian Church moved, the Presley family eventually bought the land back and turned the church into the headquarters of Elvis Presley Enterprises. Ruth Marie actually visited Graceland once when it belonged to Elvis in 1967 at the invitation of Elvis's grandmother and then later, after the house was open to the public with her grandkids. In that 2009 interview, she was candid of her feelings on Elvis and all of his changes to her childhood home and her first home with her husband. She said, I wasn't really crazy about his music, but my mother marveled at his hymns. The decor was super different. Elvis didn't like the chandelier we had in the dining room. It came from New Orleans. He put up some garish thing. We did not have a jungle room growing up, and we didn't have a billiard room. I thoroughly enjoyed it, but it didn't feel like home. The Cobbs stayed local and in their later years were in a Memphis retirement home. Ruth, one of the last residents of Graceland before Elvis, passed away at 87 years old in 2013. And that is it. What was your favorite part? Let me know in the comments below. Follow me on Facebook and Instagram for rare photos and fun facts that don't make it into the videos. I'll even be sharing some of the photos I used in this video. The links for those are in the description box below. As always, thank you so much for watching and please subscribe for more adventures.